Hi, uh, my name is Ron Weiss, and I'm going to present our work entitled Wave Tacotron Spectrogram Free End to End Text to Speech Synthesis. This is joint work uh, with several of my colleagues at Google Research RJ Scary Ryan, Eric Battenberg, Sarush Mari Riyad, and Dirk Kingma. So, what is Wave Tacotron? Uh, well, the idea is we want to train a TTS model and a single sequence to sequence model that can go directly from a normalized text or phoneme sequence to uh, waveform samples without having any intermediate representations like a spectrogram and without having you know multiple neural networks like a separate neural vocoder. And the way we're going to do this is we're just going to train a model to directly predict the sequence of waveform blocks of about 10 to 50 milliseconds. And again, no, no spectrograms anywhere. And the goal of this work, in addition to just uh, simplifying the architecture, is to do fast uh, waveform generation. So let's see how we do it. Um, so the model is actually based off of the Tacotron sequence-to-sequence uh, -sequence TTS model. And this is sort of uh, decomposed into several different components. There's an encoder neural network, which takes a sequence of input phonemes or uh, characters, and that just maps them to a latent uh, uh, representation. That gets passed through an attention network to an autoregressive decoder, which basically generates MEL spectrogram frames uh, in a sequence, sort of one frame at a time in an autoregressive way. Uh, and so this spectrogram is then uh, passed into an independently trained uh, vocoder network. In the Tacotron literature, we usually use a wave RNN um, to generate uh, waveform samples from the intermediate spectrogram representation. And so wave RNN is, is sort of a, gives really high quality synthesis results, but it generates the waveform sort of one sample at a time in an autoregressive way. So it's actually quite slow. And we're hoping to replace that with something uh, faster, integrated training end to end. So how do we do that? Well, essentially, we're going to repurpose the Tacotron network, uh, throw away the vocoder, and essentially um, replace the spectrogram frame uh, generation with a, a, a network that generates a, a sequence of waveform blocks. And so what's a waveform block? We're just going to take the 1D uh, uh, target signal. We're going to cut it up into non-overlapping segments. By default, we use a segment size of 960 samples, which is 40 milliseconds at a 24 kilohertz sampling rate. Um, and then uh, you know we're going to train the model to predict these things, and so the result is a again a block autoregressive uh, waveform generator, and the idea is sort of each uh, step through the decoder generates a new block of waveform samples, and sort of uh, uh, the important distinction between this and, and wave RNN is that uh, the waveform samples in each block are generated in parallel. It's just a one-shot generation of this full k-dimensional vector. Uh, it's not no sample by sample autoregression or anything like wave RNN. So that's that's where it gets the its speed from. OK, uh, so what does the architecture look like? Well, um, it's essentially Tacotron. Uh, we have the exact same encoder, a similar attention and sort of decoder network, um, except we attach on top of the decoder uh, a conditional normalizing flow, which sort of uh, behaves in the, the same way as a vocoder. The idea is this uh, normalizing flow is just modeling this uh, conditional distribution of a, the uh, output samples for uh, the block at time t, y of t. Um, as a function of all of the previous uh, output samples through this autoregressive path and the text through the encoder. And so essentially, the job of the Tacotron network is just to predict conditioning features for this flow. We don't have any supervision signal on here. It's not a spectrogram. I don't know what it is. It's whatever the neural network learns that it needs to, to solve this task. Um, and again, we can just train this network like Tacotron on its own end to end, just directly maximizing the likelihood of the training data uh, using this, uh, this uh, uh, decomposition. So this is related to, to sort of several uh, threads of work that have come up in the TTS literature over the past several years. Um, it's sort of uh, closely related to uh, normalizing flow-based vocoder models, which generate spectrogram. Uh, sorry, which generate waveform uh, samples from um, spectrograms in parallel. Uh, more recently, there's also also been several papers that look at doing the the text to sp spectrogram synthesis. Uh, using normalizing flows. Uh, most recently, there's this Flowtron model, which is actually probably most similar uh, to the model we described in this work, because um, it's autoregressive, except again, we're going, we're sort of merging these two things together and training a single normalizing flow that goes from text to waveform samples. Um, of course, we're not the first, uh, actually, to try and tackle this uh, text to waveform samples directly, uh, 
the REST generation task. Uh, there have been a few uh, uh, papers that have come out in the past few months, namely this EATS model and FastSpeech 2S, which go directly from text to uh, waveforms. Um, they're a fairly different uh, model class. They both use adversarial training. And another uh, distinction from our work is that they both use MEL spectrograms, uh, either as a loss function or as an intermediate uh, supervision signal somewhere during training, whereas we're just going directly to waveforms. There's no spectrograms anywhere. OK, uh, so diving a little bit in, into what this normalizing flow looks like. Again, this is a, a neural network which models the joint distribution of uh, a block of K samples. We use an architecture uh, that models the, the signal at multiple scales. It's actually quite similar to the flow wavenet neural vocoder. And the idea is we sort of uh, will model the structure of the signal in uh, M uh, five different stages, each stage sort of operating at a different time scale. And within each stage, there are N uh, steps of this sort of flow mapping. Um, and so the total, the total sort of depth of this network is about 60 steps. And what's interesting uh, or sort of unusual about a normalizing flow as opposed to sort of more conventional neural networks is it is designed to be invertible. Um, and so it's, it's a network that maps essentially between uh, uh, waveform uh, samples in this sort of highly structured space to white noise, uh, which is sort of a highly uh, an unstructured space. And in the noise space, it's sort of easy to generate samples. It's easy to measure likelihoods, uh, which is much harder to do directly in the waveform space. So you could, we could think of this network essentially as parameterizing a very complicated change of variables between this, again, the structured waveform space and uh, this noise space. Um, but we can sort of easily maximize likelihood and, and train these things. And I'll explain that in more detail on the next slide. All right, so uh, training looks uh, sort of broadly similar to Tacotron or, and, or any sort of sequence to sequence network training. We use teacher forcing uh, to maximize the likelihood. That is, um, you know, we condition the generation for this frame at time t on all of the previous uh, uh, frames. Um, uh, and at each step, what we're doing is we're actually, and this is a little bit backwards, uh, we're actually going to map from the ground truth target waveform to a sample of noise sort of going through the network and uh, from the left to the right. Um, and so what that lets us do is sort of measure the loss relatively efficiently uh, as just the um, uh, likelihood of the generated noise sample under a simple spherical Gaussian, as well as this Jacobian determinant uh, term, which just uh, sort of uh, uh, captures um, how the space is warped between uh, the sort of structured waveform and, and the noise. Uh, and that just maximizes the likelihood of the waveform. Um, the, uh, uh, in addition, we have this end of sequence um, classifier loss, which, you know, following Tacotron 2 is just a simple binary classification loss for sort of at every decoder frame. We just try and predict whether or not the current frame is the last frame of the uh, signal. So, so the model knows when to stop during generation. Um, so sampling uh, basically uses this network in reverse. Uh, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to take the same flow that we had before, and we're just going to invert it. And by that, I mean, we're going to take the inverse of each layer in this network, and then just we're going to uh, run through it in the op in the reverse order. So what we do to generate uh, a waveform uh, a block, um, a single frame, essentially, is we're going to sample a noise vector from a spherical Gaussian. We're going to pass it through the inverse of the flow uh, from before with the same autoregressive conditioning that we had. Uh, and that's going to give us a new waveform block. And then we're just going to repeat this process to generate the full signal. And so once we have the sequence of waveform blocks, in order to generate the final one-dimensional waveform that we can actually listen to, um, we don't do any even uh, completely unsophisticated signal processing like uh, overlap add or anything. We're just going to concatenate uh, these waveform blocks. And that's going to give us the final 1D signal. OK, so we did a bunch of experiments uh, comparing several different uh, baseline uh, systems. We have a Tacotron model like the original Tacotron paper, which just uses a non-neural network uh, vocoder uh, with the Griffin Lim algorithm. We compare that to a model like Tacotron 2, which has a Tacotron network generating mouse spectrograms and a wave RNN vocoder. Um, in addition, uh, we experiment with changing that uh, vocoder for a flow-based model, which uh, uses the same architecture as uh, we use in the fully end-to-end -end wave Tacotron model, as sort of a point in between the two. Um, we're going to experiment with two different data sets, both uh, US English speech, both with a single female speaker and sampled at 24 kilohertz. One is this proprietary uh, Google voice, uh, which contains about 40 hours of training data. 
Um, and in addition, just to, for, for comparison purposes, we're going to train a model on the public LJ speech data set, which is uh, smaller. It's, a, it's, it's about half the size in terms of hours uh, and smaller still because the average utterance in terms of number of utterances, because the average uh, duration of the utterances is, is, is a good bit longer. So it's, it's, it's sort of a, a harder case for the model. All right, um, so we'll start off just by looking at generation speed uh, of these different models. Um, and so what is shown in this table here is just seconds, the seconds it takes to generate five seconds of speech for all these different models. Uh, we look at performance on uh, Google TPU, a tensor processing unit accelerator, as well as on a sort of conventional CPU. And uh, um, so what we find is actually wave Tacotron is quite fast. Um, it's roughly not quite 10 times faster than real time. Um, real time would be five seconds per uh, five seconds uh, on TPU and about twice as fast as real time on CPU. Um, and the big contrast here is to Tacotron plus Wave RNN, which is quite slow. Um, it's about uh, 10 times slower than this Wave Tacotron model on TPU. Um, the other important thing to note is that there's uh, this K parameter, the size of the waveform blocks that are being generated in Wave Tacotron, sort of. Uh, um, uh, controls the synthesis speed. Because as we decrease K, we have more blocks. So we have to take more autoregressive steps. And that sort of reduces the ability for the model to parallelize uh, generation. And so we see um, generation speed slowing down uh, over there as we decrease K. OK, um, so we also obviously uh, wanted to measure um, uh, performance in terms of quality. And so we did listening tests, as is commonly done, uh, where raters were um, asked to rate the, the speech naturalness on a Five point scale, and we just report mean opinion score uh, over here. We compare all the models that I described before um, in two variants of each one one trained on character inputs, another trained on phoneme inputs. Um, and sort of broadly, what we find is that Tacotron plus Wave RNN gives us the best quality, sort of regardless of whether there's character inputs or phoneme inputs. We get an MOS of about 4.4. 4. 4. Um, Wave Tacotron is not quite as good, although you know it still gets reasonable uh, MOS. The, with phoneme inputs, it's at 4.2. But with character inputs, there's a big gap. It's only at uh, not quite 4.1. Um, and so what's happening here uh, is essentially we're asking this network uh, to, to solve a harder task of generating waveform samples. It's a much more complicated representation than null spectrograms. Um, and the loss sort of encourages it to focus on doing a good job generating this uh, waveform structure. And that sort of biases the model away from necessarily learning pronunciation unless we made the model bigger. Um, just to give you a sense of what these numbers uh, Mean, here's a sample of Tacotron plus Wave RNN. Tajima Airport serves Toyoka. And Wave Tacotron. Tajima Airport serves Toyoka. Both of them actually sound pretty decent. Uh, we also did experiments on LJ speech. Uh, again, the data set, the data here is a little bit more challenging because there's less of it and the utterances are longer. You get the same sort of trends. Tacotron plus Wave RNN performs quite well. Um, Wave uh, Tacotron performs uh, almost as well. Uh, or comes in second, although there's actually a much, much larger gap here than there was in the previous data set. And, and we think this is just because, again, we're trying to train the model on a much harder task. We're giving it much less training data here. We didn't just sort of tune the regularization or anything uh, for this task. And so it's, it's sort of maybe not shocking that it doesn't perform quite as well. Um, that said, I mean, it, it still generates uh, you know, intelligible speech. It's not terrible. Here's, here's a quick sample. While at sea, the captain of the ship was responsible for the security of the prisoner. But it's not as good as, as Tacotron plus Wave RNN. Uh, finally, I just want to sort of quickly note another advantage of the, the normalizing flow approach. Um, so what we did here is uh, we, we took a, a piece of input text and we generated 10, 10 samples uh, from each model uh, for the same input text and just uh, computed the F0 track, the pitch track for each one of those samples and plotted them on top of each other. This gives you a sense as to how much variation there is in the pitch track or in the prosody across samples. And what we find is that the baseline tacotron is actually really quite consistent, um, uh, regardless of what vocoder you use. But in contrast, wave tacotron is actually uh, has much more variation in terms of uh, these pitch tracks, which sort of uh, gives an indication as to one of the advantages of this maximum likelihood approach with a, with a powerful probabilistic model. Uh, the neural network is actually learning uh, to capture sort of several different realistic uh, prosody renditions of the same sentence. And that's that's coming out uh, uh, in these samples. OK, uh, and just to summarize, um, Wave Tacotron is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence CTS model. It generates uh, waveform samples in a block autoregressive way without any spectrograms. Um, we can train it just by maximizing likelihood. Um, it gives pretty high fidelity output, although it's not quite as good in terms of mean opinion score compared to a Tacotron 2-like uh, baseline. 
um, but is much, much faster. It's about an order of magnitude faster in practice, which is a nice advantage. And it does a better job sort of capturing the, the space of prosody variation. We see this uh, URL for uh, sound examples that I couldn't didn't have a chance to play in this talk. Uh, thanks for listening.